Archbishop Dominica Bierman has traveled the world for over three decades proclaiming the gospel from Zion to the nations with miracles following. She exposes the false doctrines of replacement theology and preaches restoration to the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is the revival of the third millennium, the 21st century like the first century. So beloved, I know this is a mouthful, but I am going to download everything to you today because this is going to set up the stage going towards uh, the Shemitah year. That is the year, seventh year, when slaves are set free as that's the time. It's a Shabbat year. And so we need to know as the United Nations for Israel, and we need to know for everyone that is listening to this teaching, we need to know how do we relate to Israel that after 72 years of being bashed by the United Nations, being bashed by the Arab nations, being bashed by Hitler's child, which is the Palestinian cause that was concocted between the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem in 1941 together with Hitler in Berlin to raise up an army, uh, an Arab army within the land of Israel to exterminate the Jewish people and effectuate the final solution from within the land, which I believe the New World Order is cashing and banking on that together with all of this COVID fear pandemic and injections and whatnot. So Israel has been attacked from everywhere and now the spirit of grace and supplication is coming according to Zechariah 12 to wake up the Orthodox Jews, those that are mourning separately, men from women, praying separately, men from women, like any one of you that has ever been in Israel, been in the Kotel, you've seen them, separated men from women. They are going to receive that spirit of grace and supplication, revival, awakening. It's coming to the Jewish people, especially to the Orthodox Jews. Our job is to pray, our job is to make the Jewish people jealous. Uh -uh, but Christianity has not been able to do it. But now it's time to revoke that identity theft. It's time now for the Roman Christ identity of the Messiah to be removed and a Jewish identity of the Messiah to be restored to make the Jewish people jealous, just like Paul says in Romans 11. He says very, very clearly in Romans 11 that the purpose was to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. That's why the dullness, and that's why the Gentiles have been brought in and Israel has been so dull. It's taken all these 2,000 years where about Christians have not made the Jews jealous. If they would have made the Jews jealous, then I'll tell you something. Then Martin Luther would have been able to evangelize all the Jews. But Christianity didn't make the Jewish people jealous. Pagan feasts mixed with Rome have not made the Jewish people jealous. Saying the law is done away with has totally, totally rejected the Jewish people altogether. Because how can the Torah that is eternal be done away with? In Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, it says that the new covenant is that the Torah needs to be written in our hearts of the house of Israel, the house of Judah. And you come and say, we are in the New Testament. And the law is done away with. Well, that's not the new covenant that's given to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And that is a false gospel that has been preached to the Gentiles. And therefore, there hasn't been this massive worldwide revival where about we can see that there are sheep nations on the earth. Why there are no sheep nations? Because a false gospel has been preached, not the gospel made in Zion. Therefore, I call my book, The Identity Theft, the book of the millennium, because it is the book that will open up the eyes of so many people worldwide and it will thrust into a tremendous end time awakening and revival when the Jewish identity of the Messiah is restored in full glory and we are restored back to have the relationship with Israel that's a covenant relationship. It's not a romantic relationship. It's a covenant relationship. You know, when it's an infatuation relationship and a romantic relationship, then Israel is going to disappoint us 
like Israel has been doing lately with so much anger because uh, she's become the guinea pig of the nation for the COVID injections, because um, there is a government that is now comprised of both Arabs and leftists and together with the right wing. And so it's disappointed countless of Christians. Beloved, but when we do, when we have a covenant relationship with Israel, when we have a, a covenant love for Israel, like Ruth had for Naomi, then we will not be disappointed, but we will be expectant for Yahweh to fulfill his promises that he will have a holy remnant in the land that will be there to cry out, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahweh. But because so many people are disappointed and because the other Christians that, let's say, did not love Israel. I'm not even talking about radical Muslims that hate Israel. I'm talking about Christians that maybe uh, they were not Christian Zionists. They, they, they still have uh, steeped in replacement theology and, and they still believe that the church replaced Israel and they're going to come and say, aha, aha, didn't I tell you that the church replaces Israel? They're going to come and say, didn't I tell you that those Jews are no good? That they deserve to die. They deserve to be humiliated. That all this, uh, the, the state of Israel is a counterfeit. Those voices are there already. I've heard them. But we need to have an answer for them. We need to have an answer for these voices during this time. And the, because these voices are now fueling anti-Semitism. And I'm not even talking about Palestinian, Muslims, Christians. That, 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 that's a given. I'm talking about the church right now. Protestant, Catholic, every denomination. It doesn't matter. That's why my book, The Identity Theft, is so important because it speaks to every de denomination of Christianity to bring forth a bride for the Jewish Messiah, not for the Roman Christ. That's why I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. Sometimes I'm begging. Sometimes I'm imploring. Get it. Gift it. Promote it. Take time every day to make sure you send it to a few people. Send the link for them to get it. Do not be lazy about this. This is the best and most important outreach that we need to have is to share this book, The Identity Theft, together with a free course that opens with it because it's going to rescue many from anti-Semitism that is already latent there and it's coming out in hideous ways, I tell you. Yes, from white supremacists. Yes, from black supremacists. I'm not even dealing right now with Muslims and Palestinians or the Hitler's cause, the, the Hitler's child cause. I'm dealing with Christianity because of the, the tremendous disappointment about what's happening with Israel. It provokes anti-Semitism. It provokes, that disappointment provokes anger against Israel because it's romantic love but not covenant love. When it's covenant love, we will be like a Ruth to a Naomi and we will not be disappointed. We will be ecstatic that Yahweh is moving to do his work of redemption on the people of Israel. Romans 11, 11 to 15 warns all believers, all Gentile believers, all the way from the first century until today. But today, more than ever in the 21st century, we are being warned afresh by the Apostle Paul and by this Jewish Paula right here. Romans 11, 11 to 15. In that case, I say, isn't it that they have stumbled with the result that they have permanently fallen away? Heaven forbid, quite the contrary. It is by means of their stumbling that the deliverance has come to the Gentiles in order to provoke them to jealousy. And so now I'm going to jump all the way from there to Romans 11, 17 to 24. Keep that in mind. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, a wide olive, were grafted in among them and have become equal sharers in the rich root of the olive tree that's grafted in then don't boast as if you were better than the branches. However, if you do boast, remember that you are not supporting the root. The root is supporting you. So you will say branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. True. But so what? They were broken off because of their lack of trust or faith. However, you keep your place only because of your trust or your faith. 
So don't be arrogant. On the contrary, be terrified. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he certainly won't spare you. So take a good look at God's kindness and his severity. On the one hand, severity toward those who fell off. But on the other hand, God's kindness toward you, provided you maintain yourself in that kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Moreover, the others, if they do not persist in their lack of trust or lack of faith or unbelief, they will be grafted in. Here comes the Orthodox. Because God is able to graft them back in. For if you were cut out of what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? The Apostle Paul, the emissary, the Shaliach Paul is speaking again in the 21st century. And as I said, this 21st century Paula that's Jewish as well and an apostle to the Gentiles is speaking exactly the same words. You be careful and make sure that you warn everyone to be careful. Not to be arrogant against the Jews because of their unbelief or become, they become a prey to the new world order, but rather to be terrified because that will rub the God of Israel wrong. And we already are in the midst of a judgment of the nations. Prior to the wrath of Yah, there is a judgment that the purpose of this judgment is to prepare the people for an awakening, for a revival, for a harvest that we're going to talk about. The purpose of this judgment is to corner humanity into a place where humanity will have to seek Yahweh for answers. The answers will not be in the medical system. The answers will not be in the money. The answers will not be in the great creativity and the digital. The answer will be in seeking Yahweh and in repentance. The purpose is to bring the nations to repentance so Yahweh can fulfill his world, that there's going to be a fullness of Gentiles that will come in, so that there will be a, a fulfillment of his word, that there will be many nations, like in Zechariah 2, many nations that will join Yahweh in this day. Our job is to hasten Messiah's return by reaching to the fullness of the Gentiles. Making the Jews jealous to have the Messiah is number one. And then reaching to the fullness of the Gentiles with a gospel made in Zion. This event must happen first before all the remnant, the remnant of Israel can be saved. Or at least it must happen parallel. In other words, it may very well be, as say we prophesy in part, but it may very well be there will be an outpouring of the Spirit of grace and supplication, as mentioned in Zechariah 12, over the Orthodox Jews in Jerusalem, especially and then in Israel. And that at the same time, there will be an outpouring and a revival that will bring in the fullness of the Gentiles in the nations. As usual, all these things happen parallel. Revival happens parallel to everything that is happening in Israel. Israel has been called the time clock of the nations, and indeed it has been, and it will continue to be all the way to the end. Now, our job is to make the Jewish people jealous by preaching a Jewish Messiah, not a Roman Christ. And by living a Jewish Messiah and a Jewish uh, a Hebrew roots gospel and not a Roman gospel. That's why this book, The Identity Theft, is the tool par excellence to be able to bring in as many people to become the fullness of those Gentiles that will make the Jewish people jealous in this end of times. So get it and gift it and provoke it and promote it and do everything that you need to do. Hallelujah. And so now the job is to reach the fullness of the Gentiles with the gospel made in Zion. Romans eleven twenty five to 36 says the following. For brothers, I want you to understand this truth, which God formerly concealed but is now revealed, so that you won't imagine you know more than you actually do. It is that stoniness to a degree has come upon Israel until the Gentile world enter in its fullness. Now, let me stop right there. You know, the word of Yah tells us that the, this gospel of the kingdom 
this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel made in Zion, which has not been preached since the council of Nicaea or the second century, even before them until today, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all nations and then the end will come. The reason why Yahweh has not poured out his wrath yet, though this world deserves it, is because this gospel of the kingdom has not been preached in all nations. So the end cannot come. But we have a very short amount of time to preach the gospel of the kingdom, to preach the gospel made in Zion in all nations, so that the end will come, so that all Israel can be saved. We must reach to the fullness of the Gentiles. So the biggest, most mega revival, the mega salvation, the mega harvest of all times is awaiting us. And we need to be many more that we have the gospel of the kingdom and not the gospel gospel of Christianity, which is not the gospel of the kingdom. Yeshua didn't bring Christianity, brought the kingdom. And we need to bring it back right now on the earth. And that kingdom comes with the Hebrew roots foundations. It comes with the Jewish Messiah. It comes with holiness, with righteousness, with obedience, with signs, wonders, and miracles. Astounding signs, wonders, and miracles. Our job is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel made in Zion. Our job is to bring the bride up to the occasion. That bride of Messiah that is comprised of the one new man, the Jew and Gentile as one in the Messiah. But how can we be one? If apart the Gentiles have a Roman Christ and the Jews have a Jewish Messiah. How can we be one? We need to decide whether the Messiah is a Roman Christian or whether the Messiah is a Jewish Messiah. It's time for definition. And we need to help the bride to come to that definition, that bride and Messiah, because only then the spirit and the bride will say, come. And that's our job. Our job is to bring the bride of Messiah to the definition, to the embracing of a Jewish Messiah instead of a Roman Christ. That's why the identity theft is a rudder for this time. This book is a rudder for this time. That's why we have had our unified members in the nations uh, feverishly translating it to their languages and many more languages to come because they know it's an urgent matter that finally the bride of Messiah will come to the realization that we have only one Messiah, we have one gospel, we have one Holy Spirit, we have one Torah word, we have one everything, one kingdom, and therefore we need to remove all the trappings that came with the, the gospel from Rome and Babylon and come back to the gospel made in Zion, which is the gospel of the kingdom by which all nations are going to hear it at least once now. And that's, e that's easy now. It's easier. Why? Because of broadcasting, because of TV, because of internet, because of digital. Do you know why Yahweh has still allowed the internet to keep on going? Do you know why still Yahweh has allowed all this to keep up? Why doesn't he just stop the whole thing? And the whole world will be in darkness and takes us out of here, rapture, and that's it. For the simple reason that he wants us to broadcast and to make sure that we use all the digital capabilities to be able to reach the entire world with the gospel of the kingdom, with a gospel made in Zion, because everybody needs to hear it at least one time, and then the end will come. Our job is to preach that gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, to bring in the biggest harvest of nations that's ever been brought before him, a harvest of sheep nations. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going back to Romans 11:25. And I'm going to read it again. For brothers, I want you to understand this truth which God formerly concealed, but has now revealed, so that you won't imagine you know more than you actually do. It is that stoniness to a degree has come upon Israel until the Gentile world enters in its fullness. And that it is in this way that all Israel will be saved, as the Tanakh says. Out of Zion, Zion, will come the Redeemer, he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Out of Zion will come the Redeemer. Hallelujah. He will turn un away ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. 
With respect to the good news, they are hated for your sake. But with respect to being chosen, they are loved for the patriarch's sake. For God's free gifts and his calling are irrevocable. Just as you yourselves were disobedient to God before, but have received mercy now because of Israel's disobedience, so also Israel has been disobedient now, so that by your showing them the same mercy, mark those words, by showing them the same mercy that God has shown you, they too may now receive God's mercy. For God has shut up all mankind together in disobedience in order that he might show mercy to all. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So that's the plan. See, the plan starts with the fact that Zechariah 12 tells us that all the nations will come against Jerusalem. And I've already uh, showed you uh, before that all nations since the inception of the state of Israel on 14th of May of 1948, uh, then all the Arab nations came against the newly born state. We survived miraculously and thrived and prospered and even enlarged territory, according to covenant, even though we were attacked. There has been so many signs and wonders in the words of Israel that Israel has been portrayed as a David before the nations, just like Zechariah 12 says that Israel will be like a David at that time when all the nations come against her. And then Jerusalem has become a heavy stone. And we can mark it that it's always been a heavy stone from the moment that Israel was established back in its land in 1948. But when President Trump established the embassy of the USA in Jerusalem, thus recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, that it has been already for 3,000 years since King David, then the United Nations banded together to absolutely oppose the move and be against Israel being called the capital of Israel. So it became a heavy stone for the nations and COVID-19 was released all the way from 2019, the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020 and until today it was released and a judgment on the nations was released just like Zechariah 12 tells us that the nations that hold it will actually uh, be destroyed. And so that's exactly what has been happening. The pandemic of fear has happened. The jobs that can leave people in bad condition and even kill them has happened. That alters DNA has happened. Israel has become the guinea pig of the nations. Many in Israel are coming to a point of desperation or waking up, even those that took the first two jobs. Now the third job is mandatory. And they're beginning to wake up and saying, what's going on? What's going on? Many are seeking. Many secular Jews are looking for God in religious Orthodox Judaism, are turning to some faith because they need to be awakened right now. And then comes the second part of this judgment. And at the time that that judgment is happening in the nations, which I believe COVID-19 is a judgment, not yet the wrath of God, but yet the judgment. The great tribulation is yet to come, but this is pretty much a tribulation. And then what happens is now the spirit of grace and supplication revival among the Orthodox Jews. And then Makor Niftah, the open fountain, Zechariah 13, 1, when those that are getting saved are also going to be cleansed from all kinds of uh, theologies and theories that have, because even in Orthodox Judaism, there is replacement theology. So the Kabbalah and many things of the Talmud and other things are going to be removed until the Orthodox Jews that are going to be saved, the third holy remnant that's going to be saved will become Come purified like silver, like gold, and will worship only one that will be Yavetz Vaot through the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. The living Torah with a written Torah written in the hearts and minds, full of the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, bringing life into the nations because of this tremendous revival. And then I've mentioned that our job is to pray for that to happen. And our job is to make the Jewish people jealous because Christianity has not made the Jewish people jealous. 
But now, when we revoke the Roman Christ identity of the Messiah and we return him to become a Jewish Messiah, then we are going to be able to rise up as that bright, pure and holy, making the Jewish people jealous with anointing, with power, glory, with authority. We will be able to bring the fullness of the Gentiles in. A mega harvest is going to now happen. Hallelujah. And that mega harvest is going to bring in the sheep nations. It's going to bring in the bride. And indeed, this gospel of the kingdom, not the gospel of Christianity, no, but the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Because if, if we say the gospel of Christianity, which Christianity? Roman Catholic Christianity, Protestant Christianity, Evangelical Christianity, Charismatic Christianity, Pentecostal Christianity, Methodist Christianity, Presbyterian Christianity, New Age Christianity, Chief Grace Gospel Christianity, which Christianity? No, the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached. The gospel that Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, brought. The gospel that the Jewish apostles brought. And this is what we are there to do. We are there to preach the gospel of the kingdom. We are there to preach the Jewish Messiah. We are there to collect the biggest end time harvest to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles. Because the word of Yah in Romans 11 says very clearly, first, the full amount of the Gentiles, so the fullness of the Gentiles will come in and then all of Israel will be saved just as it is written. That's why it's so important that we keep on working to revoke the Roman Christ identity, to return to the Jewish Messiah and to make Israel jealous and to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles, that bride that will say, like in, in, in Revelation 22, when it says, the spirit and the bride say, come. And he that is thirsty, come and drink of the waters of life freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what is awaiting us. In Yeshua's mighty name, share with everyone you know. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's program, Support this broadcast by donating to kad-esh.org. To connect with us, write to info at kad-esh.org or mail to 52 Tuscan Way, Suite 202-412, St. Augustine, Florida, 32092, USA. Or call us at 1-972-301-7087. We'd love to hear from you and join us again next week. Shalom.